Welcome to History in Six, a place where we sample history in six minute increments. I'm your host, Tima Lindell. Today we're going to talk about colonial America and the decline of mercantilism. Time is short, let's jump into it. First, it helps us to understand what mercantilism is. Mercantilism is an economic thought where the main primary focus is on national wealth. The mercantilists believe the nation's wealth was measured by its holdings of gold and silver, which is known as bullion. The primary goal was to implement policies to increase the nation's bullion reserves, therefore creating a favorable balance of trade. A favorable balance of trade meant that a country exported more goods than it imported. This would ensure a net inflow of gold and silver. The mercantilist policies aimed to encourage exports through government actions like subsidies, tax breaks for certain industries. And it wanted to restrict imports to limit the outflow of money, so to speak. Mercantilist policies also included restrictions on imports through things like tariffs, where we taxed imported goods. If I quotas on how much could be brought in, or even bans on certain imports, because if I raise the taxes on a good, it's going to be more expensive and people aren't going to want to buy these imported goods. They're going to buy local goods instead. By setting quotas, we limit the amount or we just ban them and keep them from entering to begin with. So the government played a strong role in regulating the economy under market. The goal was tight control of trade policies and establish colonies as a source of raw materials and then supporting industries which were deemed essential for national strength, national power. And during the 16th, 1700s, mercantilism was the primary economic theory that was implemented by the various European governments. The problem was America was not like the other colonies. By 1715, the population had passed 1 million. America was booming, and no other colony was anywhere as large as the American colonies. Barbados, Bahamas, these colonies had 50, 60,000 people in them, not a million. Because of the size of America and its expansion, things were changing at a speed that the authorities couldn't keep pace with. Information was quickly out of date. England was trying to control the economy. They did things like the Act of 1699, which forbade colonies to ship wool, yarn, or cloth anywhere. The Act of 1732 forbid hats to being exported. The Act of 1750 forbid bar iron from being imported into England. Instead, the colonists took the iron and made things with it. They made kettles, they made pans, they made kitchen utensils. Things that weren't under ban from England. On top of that, because of the cheap wood available in America, they became a leading shipbuilder. A third of England's fleet was American built. And this was allowed because England needed the cheap wood. And when England inquired about the goods that were made in America, the governors did what they did best. They lied. <laughs> they sent back phony statistics. They easily bamboozled these aristocrats because these were leisurely men who had no idea how to manage a large economy, nor had they ever stepped foot in America. So the colonists were anxious to downplay how well the colonies were doing to avoid the wrath of the homeland. Here's where we begin to see the unraveling of mercantilism. Complexity of global trade was increasing geometrically. It was impossible to discern what was the best long interest for the country. Like barred iron, we're going to bar barred iron, but hey, they just changed to something else. They made pots and pans and utensils with the iron. Central planning wasn't able to keep up with the pace of change. Entrepreneurial capitalism was flourishing in America, and it was too subtle, resourceful for the state to manage it efficiently. Adam Smith's invisible hand was taking over in America, and Britain had no idea it was taking place. And the truth is the colonies were quickly maturing, and the Crown didn't see it coming. They still looked down at these colonies as backwater people, poor. They were like, ah, oh, these colonists, they don't help with any of the wars. They don't create anything of consequence outside of tobacco. And the colonists, they allowed the misconception to persist as it kept the government from intervening in their lives. 
By 1750, the mainland colonies had expanded by 500% in the previous 50 years. 1700, America output was 5% of Britain's. By 1775, America output was 40% of Britain's. America's growing wealth was leading to an extensive middle class. This was no longer the poor rubes that the crown thought they, that the government thought they were. This is the foundations of what would later be known as the American dream. America was finding their way and Britain had no idea it was taking place, yet alone try to control any of it. A lesson they would learn at great heartache in the years to come. If you've enjoyed this episode, tell a friend about us. If you haven't already, subscribe to get future content. And as always, have a great day if you want to.